Welcome back everyone. In this video, we will be talking about the Wigger diagram. This is a very useful graph that depicts the cardiac cycle. The diagram has time on the x-axis and pressure and volume on the y. At the bottom, you can see which heart sounds correspond to the different phases of the cardiac cycle, which I'll discuss later. You also see at which points the EKG waves correspond with which part of the cardiac cycle. I'd recommend watching a video on EKG because I'm not going to go into too many details, but I will review some of the basic waveforms. Next, we have the curve for ventricular volume, ventricular pressure, atrial pressure, and aortic pressure. Let's first review some basic cardiac physiology. So we know that the heart has four chambers and you have kind of two phases, which are called diastole and systole. So let's discuss diastole first. In diastole, this is when the blood, when the ventricles are being filled with blood from your body. So your AV valves are open, which are your tricuspid on the right and the mitral on the left. And basically in this phase, these valves are open, your semilunar valves are closed. That's your pulmonic and your aortic valve. So these are closed. And what happens is blood goes from the atria to the ventricles. In systole, the opposite is true. So in systole, you have the semilunar valves are open. So again, your pulmonic, your aortic are open, and then your AV valves are closed. And so what happens in this phase is the ventricles contract and they push the blood into your pulmonary artery and into the aorta, to the body. Now, just for some basic EKG review, we have our P wave. This represents atrial depolarization. After the P wave, the atria contract, and that's atrial systole. The QRS corresponds to ventricular depolarization. So this is when the ventricles get their signals, they depolarize, and after that, they contract. And so ventricular systole starts after the QRS. Then you have your T wave, and the T wave represents ventricular repolarization. And after the T wave is when ventricular diastole starts and the ventricles relax. I would just like to note that the Wigger diagram that I'm discussing today represents the left side of the heart. It's very similar for the right, it's just the pressures are um, different because the right side of the heart operates at lower pressure. So let's start with our ventricular volume curve. You can see in systole here, that again, remember, is when the heart is pushing the blood to the body. And because the ventricles are emptying at this point, the volume goes down. In diastole, the ventricles are now um, being filled with blood from the atria and volume goes up. Next, let's look at our ventricular pressure curve. Let's start with systole. Systole has three phases, which the first of which is our isovolumic contraction phase. It occurs between this two lines here, the dotted and that solid line. You can see here the pressure in the isovolumic contraction phase is rising. However, the volume stays the same, and that is because the mitral valve and the aortic valve are both closed. So the blood's kind of just chilling in those ventricles, and the volume's not changing. What happens is that eventually the pressure in the ventricles builds up enough to where our aortic valve opens, the ventricular, and then we have our second phase, which is our rapid ejection phase. So here, the ventricular pressure is above the aortic pressure, and you have our rapid ejection phase where the blood is pumped into the aorta. Next, as the ventricles keep pumping blood to the aorta, the pressure kind of falls. And at this point, as the pressure falls, it's continuing to pump blood to the aorta due to the inertia that's created from the contraction of the ventricles. And so eventually the ventricular pressure falls enough to where our aortic valve closes and our ventricular pressure curve here is below that aortic pressure curve. And we have our, before that, we have our reduced um, ejection phase. So we have the isovolumic contraction, the rapid ejection phase, and then there's a reduced ejection phase, which is the third phase of systole. Um, and that corresponds with the T wave in the EKG. So, which makes sense because the T wave, after the T wave, we know we have um, ventricular diastole. And after the reduced ejection phase, we have ventricular diastole because the aortic valve closes. 
Next, let's talk about diastole. Diastole also has three phases, the first of which is our isovolumic relaxation phase. So similar to the isovolumic contraction, volume here is not changing. However, the pressure is going down now because the ventricles have pumped their blood out and now that pressure is decreasing and again, both your aortic valve are closed in this phase and our mitral valve, valve is also closed. So because they're closed, the ventricles again are just kind of chilling in that little phase and eventually the ventricular pressure falls below the atrial diastolic pressure. Over here, you can see the pressure curve falls below this atrial pressure curve and that triggers open our mitral valve and the um, second phase of diastole occurs, which is our uh, rapid filling phase. So in the rapid filling phase, as you can guess, the ventricle, the ventricles rapidly fill with blood. And then they, you have the third phase, which is diastasis. And this is that um, similar to the rapid ejection, after the rapid filling, you have a slowdown of how much blood is being filled into the ventricles. So that just occurs and that's called diastasis and that corresponds with that ends with the p wave of the next cycle as you can see and remember that makes sense because diastasis again is that reduced filling so ventricles are filling with blood and then that p wave happens that signals atrial depolarization and then you have this extra little uh, amount of fluid that the atria is pushing into the ventricles so we'll talk about that on our next slide all right so we have our atrial pressure curve now the first wave that we see here is our A wave, and you can see it occurs after our P wave, our P wave in the EKG. So what happens again with the P wave is the it represents atrial depolarization. The A wave represents atrial contraction, and this contraction of the atria pumps about 10 milliliters of blood to the ventricular volume in ventricular diastole. So the atria contract and they pump blood into the uh, ventricles, just a small amount of blood, and that um, shows up as the A wave. Next, we have our C wave, and you can see this comes after the QRS in the EKG. So QRS, again, represents ventricular depolarization. And what the C wave is, is because the ventricles are contracting, it kind of bulges the AV valve up into the atria and it increases its pressure slightly, which comes through as the C wave. After the C wave, we have this kind of um, slope here called the X descent, and this just represents the downward displacement of the closed AV valve during rapid ventricular ejection phase, so the atria just kind of relaxes a little bit. And then you have this V wave here, and before you get that V wave, you can see the pressure slowly increasing, and that is because the atria is getting blood from the pulmonary veins. So as the atria is filling with blood, the pressure is increasing and you eventually get this V wave. After the V wave, you have a wide descent and that just represents the atria emptying into the ventricles, which decreases the atrial pressure. Lastly, we have our aortic pressure curve. So as we saw here, the aortic pressure is below the ventricular pressure curve in that rapid, in that, um, rapid ejection phase where the ventricles are pushing blood out to the aorta. And then eventually the aortic pressure again goes above the ventricular pressure and the aortic valve closes. And you can see this little bump here. That is called the diacritic notch or incisura. And that is caused by a slight backflow of aortic blood that fills the cusps of the aortic valve as it closes at the end of ventricular systole. So it's just the valve as it closes, there's a little bit of blood that fills those cusps at the end of ventricular systole. And also, I'd like you to note that the aortic pressure curve, you can see, doesn't go below 80. And that's because of the... Uh, the structure of our arteries that allows us to maintain our blood pressure so it doesn't fall below 80. Last, I'll just briefly talk about the heart sounds. So if we look down here, we have our first heart sound, which is S1, and that corresponds with the closure of the AV valve, which signals the start of systole. Sorry, I circled the aortic valve. I meant to circle the AV valve. The mitral valve. So that valve closing 
is the sound of S1, and that signals start of systole. And then we have S2, which corresponds with the closure of the aortic valve. So at the end of ventricular systole, when the aortic valve closes, you hear S2, and that signifies diastole starting. The S3 gallop corresponds to the rapid filling phase in early ventricular diastole. And this can be physiologic, so it can be normal in kids, in pregnancy. And so again, that represents the rapid filling phase in early ventricular diastole. There's a fourth sound called an S4 gallop, and this isn't on the diagram because it's an abnormal sound. And it is associated when the atria contract against a hypertrophied ventricle at the end of ventricular diastole. So basically, um, if, the, if someone has high blood pressure, for example, the left ventricle hypertrophies and the S4 gallop is heard at the, um, at, in atrial systole when the atrias uh, pump that last 10 mil milliliters of blood into the ventricles, when they contract and that blood hits the wall of the ventricle, of that hyper hypertrophied ventricle, you hear an S4 gallop. And that is all I have for today. I hope this video was helpful and that it made the wicker diagram a little bit more digestible and easier to understand. Thank you for watching the video and have a good day.